pretty important segment we're about to start here, so let's, uh, let's not waste any time. Um, we left off in this forest dungeon here, uh, with the, with the stupid behind encounter rate. Um, but to refresh your memory, we are looking for the stolen weapon shipment, and, uh, the owner of the local weapon shop was also kidnapped, um, uh, during this, uh, you know, during this theft. And, uh, we're hoping to find out who's responsible. Uh, it's probably Seth, but who knows? And then we're talking to this guy. Um, this is the son of the weapons owner who kind of came out into the forest on his own to, um, to try and rescue his father. But of course he's not a, he's not a pro like these guys, so they're telling him to, uh, you know, to head back. But he's not gonna, you know, be all that interested in that. Um, but, so yeah, this, um, I mean, the, this dungeon is almost over. I'm more excited about the stuff that comes after. There's a whole string of important scenes. Um, we're going to have Arius's uh, audience with the council. And, um, and it's funny because this um, this whole thing with the weapons, the uh, the weapon shop in Guardia has been closed uh, for a while. Uh, actually, since the beginning of the game. Um, because they were waiting for this uh, shipment. That was the idea. And because I figured, you know, I might as well save it because everybody starts with these default weapons and then have buying new ones at the beginning of the game always seem kind of kind of dumb. Um, I had to catch that that tile set error a couple little a few seconds ago. Uh, his head was poking out to the top of the trees. Let's see what's in here. An MP apple. I don't know how that works exactly, but it basically increases my uh, my uh, max spell points if I can even get a chance to use it with all these frequent encounters. Um, Alright, here we go. Well, Arius has a lease, so we'll give it to him. And, uh, more of these wasps, man. Someone's gotta just take a exterminator to this forest. Um, well, these pig guys again. I'll leave them alone. And I think this is the last, uh, area of this dungeon. I hope so, anyway. These, these encounters are getting older. It looks nice, at least. I always thought this was a nice-looking, uh, forest, at least, you know, by the my standards in those days. Um, and with RPG Maker 2000, I mean, when you have XP, you can do all this layering stuff, and it's, you know, not even a comparison. But for right now. Oh, here we go. Um, yeah, so it's not Seth yet. Uh, this is a, a Lodite. Um, and if you remember right, he was working on the construction of the tower. Um, he spoke to him briefly. But he seems to have uh, turned on the others. I don't even know my name, do you? Uh, Connors. Which is a, a reference to the lizard from the Spider-Man comics, Kurt Connors. Uh, sick you assholes. Looks like he's taking elitist pricks now. Yeah, he's taking some lessons from Turnus. Um, so it looks like he's in league with Seth as well. And uh, Galdar is comparing him to Spider. Um, another, you know, someone who portrayed the cause. But, you know, they're, they're jumping to conclusions. I mean, they, uh, they're just kind of blindly protecting uh, the council. And Guardia, without really thinking about, you know, if that's the right thing to do, or if these guys who are, you know, turning on people, uh, have anything, you know, have a legitimate grievance. Um, okay, so now let's, let's fight this guy. I don't think he's gonna last long. Now these kind of attacks, we're using, <laughs> we're using some end game attacks on this guy. And uh, yeah, he's fried. Peace. And uh, oh, we got a scale shield. Is that like one of his scales? That's kind of gross. Um, be big though. So, oh, but now he's, you know, doing the whole uh, hostage thing. Um, but you know, this never usually ends well for the hostage taker. If movies have taught me anything, yeah. When there's flail up there, he's gonna push that boulder that's been sitting there for the whole time, <laughs> very conspicuously. Ugh. So that's Connors is out of the picture for now. And uh, I guess they're all pretty relieved that that guy didn't go home like they told him to. And uh, Connors is still kicking, according to Turnus. And uh, so that's it for that. And now it's time to... Oh, I forgot. Yeah, Seth comes. Seth is going to show up and uh, cause a little bit of trouble. And then he just sort of casually tosses that kid aside. Um, but he's really only coming in here to uh, kind of brag. And because he's got, he's definitely got his whole scheme laid out, and it's not going to be that long before he executes it. 
um, but he's not going to get baited into a fight, and he's going to get his uh, <laughs> get his friend out of there, get Connors out of there. Good old villain teleportation, something which the heroes never seem to master, but the villains, you know, must be in villain class, or at least antagonist class, as a prerequisite for villain class. Uh, okay, so now we have Arius about to meet with the council, and everybody's like, whoa, you know, big deal. And uh, this this song playing is uh, it's from Chrono Cross, but it's um, this particular melody I used it as Arius's theme, and it got played briefly in uh, Master of the Wind too when uh, Arius showed up. And uh, I just love the Chrono Cross music. I mean, I think that's arguably the the best soundtrack in, in video game history. I mean, I can't think of anything that that's better. Um, but, you know, so a lot of it shows up in this game. It's, it's great for atmosphere. Um, and so, yeah, he's about to go in there, and they're all kind of like, you know, they're real nervous. This is unprecedented. Uh, oh, they need to hear some of my ideas. It's the only way things are going to change around here. Woof. That's pretty, uh, you know, hoity-toity. I'm full of myself. He's definitely comfortable with his own skin at this point, even though he's only been to Arius for a handful of days. Sure, tell us all about it. <laughs> like it's vacation. Um, yeah, this is getting drawn out a little bit. Come on, let's go in and talk to him anyway. Enough of this blathering. Um, but yeah, you might recognize some of these council members, uh, at least, or at least one of them. One of them, if you play Master of the Wind, I'm sure you'll recognize. Yeah, we got a little rendition of his theme quickly before we head in there. <laughs> this is kind of ridiculous. All right, here we go. Yep, there they are, five of them with um, Lock, Stock, and TSB over on the on the left. I guess they're ex officio members or something like that. Um, okay, so that's all five of them, and uh, of course the chairman is an old white guy. <laughs> yeah, real progressive, Guardia. And uh, he kind of he's wondering about those names. They uh, he had a little deja vu there. Something's you know he's definitely got some kind of. Um, you know, perhaps familiarity with, with them that he's not quite aware of. Um, but they're, you know, they're playing it cool. Uh, you know, they're not gonna, they're not coming in, you know, but they're not bringing him in there and uh, yelling at him for, you know, shooting off his mouth around town. They're just, um, oh, look at this. Look, it's Ariel Deleficent. Yeah. She's in this game, too. Pretty big part, actually. Um... In fact, I'd say between the two games, she's probably the character with the most screen time in both, um, because she's, you know, a major character in this game and was a, a major antagonist in the in Master of the Wind as well. And um, but right now she is you know, seems kind of mild mannered. <laughs> she's a good actress, and uh, they're just wondering, you know, how to react to his his memory loss. Um, oh, she's asking him, "Are you happy here?" That's not the kind of thing you think Ariel would say, but um, it might make sense later. Uh, if you remember Master of the Wind and uh, her connection to, to him, or more accurately to his, uh, to his previous self for the memory loss, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and now he's going on about the towers again. This is like his, his big issue. You know, if he ran for council, this is what he would be, um, you know, ranting about all the time. Except doesn't seem like they have elections. I think you get appointed for life. Um... And then he got this friggin', you know, redneck guy with a toothpick in his mouth. Probably f must be one of those politicians that, you know, goes around in a friggin' wheelbarrow and acts like he's all, like, authentic because he never finished college or something like that. I don't know. I hate that stuff. Uh, well, I'm stupid, so I'm better than you. Or whatever. Not that you have to go to college to avoid being stupid. I'm sure, you know, a lot of college graduates are still stupid, but you get the idea. The whole anti-intellectual thing. I don't like that. But, um... Now, Wallace is getting a little frustrated. Uh, he's clearly got some conflicting feelings about the whole tower thing. And here we go. Ariel gives the explanation, though. She's a, uh, she's a very skilled bullshit artist. <laughs> um, she's given, you know, an explanation that's semi-convincing. Um, but not, like, you know, not without fault. That is enough. They have given you the answer. It's not humor. <laughs> this is such a bu Oh, he catches himself. Turnus might not have, but uh, he has enough sense to, um, you know, censor himself before he went too far. But he's clearly frustrated, and the council's frustrated too. There's something unspoken about the 
this whole thing. Uh, they, you know, the player doesn't really know yet, but there's definitely a few, like, there's you know, it's a text and then there's a subtext to this whole conversation. Um, they're all trying to keep up some kind of appearance, but um, he's a really strong. <laughs> That's so, like, Dragon Ball. His power level's incredible now! <laughs> but I wasn't watching a lot of that, so I guess it rubs off. Um, and then this thing with, with you know, Seth's, uh, Seth's pride to be, who was executed, and nobody will say why, which is really suspicious. Um, well, it's a good thing you're not the council, and we are. Mm -mm -mm. Bitch, my man ain't your baby's daddy. <laughs> but it's like this meeting is wrapping up. And then we get, you know, a little twist here um, once, he, once he leaves. Because we're going to get to see the council react. Yeah, there we go. Lord Lysander didn't recognize us at all. That's the first time you get his name. And they know. They know that that's who he used to be. Lysander. And now he's walking around, calling himself Arius, acting completely different. And they don't know what the hell to do. Um, because he was, you know, a high-ranking officer. He's, you know, their boss, really. And then, of course, you know, we cut to Nova's house, which is probably a little bit later. And, uh... She's wondering if, if he, you know, heard anything that might support her own suspicions about what they're up to. But he didn't really. I mean, they're good politicians. They're not going to slip up and give away anything, at least not while he's in the room. Um, but, you know, he's talking about kind of spying on them, kind of using those uh, those recon skills that he's been learning uh, against his uh, his employers. Um, Murphy's getting paid, though. I don't know. I never really thought of that. <laughs> I guess you don't really need money, though. You just kind of like live in a Galdar's house and, you know, getting food at the pub. Going out and finding treasure. I need to know the truth. That sounds kind of like Drew Stevenson. I guess, um, you know, that's kind of a recurring theme of mine in the stuff I write. Sort of the search for the truth, but usually the truth is not very good. Um, but in general, I think I'd rather know it than not. And uh, so now they're plotting to uh, kind of follow one after hours and see, you know, where they go when they're not uh, doing their council thing in the council building. And so they're, now they're outside the walls. This is folly. <laughs> it's a very, like, old-fashioned insult. But I guess it's better than, uh, you know, fart knocker or something like that. Um, and then Noah's, you know, just come out. She's got somebody. She's, you know, she's tailing somebody. And uh, let's see which one. Oh, it's this guy. Um, this is not Ariel. <laughs> they might be in trouble. Um, this is Azor, and he's actually the uh, the first sorcerer of uh, of Gallia. And uh, oh, there he goes. He disappeared. What's going on here? And uh, okay, so we're gonna investigate here. Something about that birdhouse. Hmm. Oh, look at that. All right. Well, guess we should stop now before we head down there, and uh, we'll see what's going on with Azor next time. Peace.